Hello everyone and in today's video I want to talk about modeling a quadcopter. I did this video a while back uh, and I want to make this more of a series of uh, modeling a quadcopter and perform some experiments and this is mostly an introduction to the subject because it can get very um, detailed and there are many aspects to modeling a quadcopter but we're gonna do a little bit of surface level and then we'll start to dig deeper in subsequent videos at least that's the idea right now and so yeah let's get started so it's a small little presentation um, and hopefully you know it gets your mind uh, moving around as to how you could you know mathematically represent a quadcopter and all the different dynamics that you know that's uh, that that's possibly um, um, that you can capture mathematically So in a nutshell, uh, what is a quadcopter? Um, I think it's important to think of the fundamentals so that we can, you know, start building um, building the foundation as to what's required to model a quadcopter. So it's a it is a multi rotor helicopter, uh, and it's propelled by four rotors. Uh, and everything that we that we do in modeling of a quadcopter is based on how the four rotors behave. Um, you know, the distance from the center of mass. You know, how much the speed of the motors and how quickly they 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 rotate it also matters the geometry of the propellers uh, so all of that is basically mounted onto the rotors so understanding the configuration is important when you're modeling a quadcopter it's also classified as a rotorcraft um, because you need propellers it's not a fixed wing aircraft uh, and the reason being is because the lift is generated by a set of rotors and what happens is they are for a quadcopter you'll have like two pairs uh, that are identical in terms of the way they rotate so two of them will rotate clockwise and two of them will counter will rotate counterclockwise and the reason being is because you don't want them to rotate around uh, an axis uh, unless and until you want them to do then you basically change the speed of um, the ones that are moving clockwise or counterclockwise and then you'll have the the sum of the total amount of you know force acting on it and we'll talk more about it as to if you want to you know create a specific rotation around the z-axis and you can basically do this by changing the speed of each motors and we're going to dwell more into it you know as we progress further and yes and they use independent variations of the speed and each rotor can move and rotate at different speeds this is important they're not coupled they are highly decoupled each motor can you know run on run at different speeds and that's really what a quadcopter is it's a uh, it's got propellers it's not fixed wing they have a set of two motors that are moving or rotating at the in the same direction and two motors that are rotating in the opposite direction and they all can be controlled independently and based on the where they are, where they rotate, you can basically, you know, change the direction or maneuver the quadcopter accordingly. In this video, we're just going to talk about, you know, how you can hover the quadcopter. How do you move forward and backward? And how do you move left and right and rotating across the Z axis? So, as I mentioned, a quadcopter has four rotors and this is a top view of it and in the top view you basically see that there are four rotors and how now if you look at any quadcopter even if you get it from the market there's a specific configuration from how they are set up which is what's the distance of each motor you know from the center of mass what's the uh, length of each propeller and based on certain configurations you'll optimize a quadcopter for you know high efficiency more maneuverability high speed or whatever be it and that's what we'll be focusing on in you know, in subsequent videos but in this video we'll just talk about you know the basic setup of a quadcopter if you see a, a machine like this you know you're talking about a quadcopter and in here you will notice that we have a rotor that's these four rotors and let me just bring up my pen and in here so you'll notice that if this is motor one and this is uh so we'll just name this as one this is two this is three and this is four 
you'll notice that this and this are motor 4 and motor 1 are rotating in the clockwise direction and motor 3 and motor 2 and motor 3 are now rotating in the counterclockwise direction this is important if you are <coughs> if you are setting your motors in such a way that all of them rotate in one direction you will find that there's an imbalance of force so by having these motors rotate in different opposite directions you are basically balancing the torque between the z-axis so this will create a uh, let me just basically so this will create a torque in one direction this will create a torque in this direction this will create a torque in this direction this will create a torque in this direction and then you cancel out each other so this way you can basically you know stabilize the the, the quadcopter and if you want the rotor uh, the quad coppers rotate in a specific rotate across the z-axis in a specific uh, whether clockwise or counterclockwise then you basically decrease the speed of this motor and this motor and increase the speed of this motor and this motor and then you'll realize that this force th the clockwise force is way greater than the anti-clockwise force or the counterclockwise force and then the quad copter will rotate in the clockwise direction and vice versa if you want it to rotate in the opposite direction you increase the speed of the other two motors and then and decrease the speed of the the motors that are you know going in the clockwise direction and then you create and generate the anti-clockwise pattern so that's basically how uh, you can control the rotation across the z-axis we'll talk a little bit more on this uh, shortly And as I mentioned, like if you have an imbalance and then between the between the motors, you will notice that they will create a rotational across the z-axis. And this is unless and until you want this to happen, you most likely by default want it to be pretty stable. But by having this clockwise anti-clockwise configuration, you're able to basically control this part of the motion of the quadcopter as well. So now let's focus on the hovering and lift off. Now for the four, for the quadcopter to hover, the total thrust produced by the four rotors must be equal to the weight of the quadcopter. That's like the minimum requirement, All right? So if I am basically, let me just get my pen. So this, if you want the, the quadcopter to, to hover, and if the quadcopter has a basically a particular mass, um, basically the potential energy um, and the weight of the quadcopter um, multiplied by the gravitational force multiplied by the height this is the basically the potential energy of the quadcopter any given height you want the force moving moving the quadcopter should be either greater or equal to so in a hover condition you might want it to be equal to but if you want it to fly it needs to be greater than the weight and that's basically what you want the quadcopter to do and this is generated by the propellers so to lift off the total thrust produced by the four rotors must be greater than the weight of the quadcopter so now let's get into some equations as that's what the 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 topic of this video is so if you want the quad copper to basically move in the z direction so if this is the um if this is the x y and z and let's take this as the axis and this might be x this might be y and this is z you're basically saying that the thrust produced by the four rotors so the z axis if you want the quad copper to move up and down as we basically uh, showed in the previous slide you want the sum of all the four motors and the sum of the torque of all the four motors is basically uh, will give you the lift and that's how you can basically calculate the force that is generated by the motor or by the quadcopter so 
so let's focus on the left and right so uh, as I think I have um, yeah so let's focus on the left and right aspects of this quadcopter so in here we just focused on the hovering what happens when it goes up and down and up and down is basically by controlling the motor speeds you can move it up and down but what if there's an imbalance between the motor speeds so for example what if they're not all equal then that's one thing that I also want to mention that if you want it to be hovering all four motors have to be at the same speed because if there are different speeds you'll be you'll be causing a rotational torque across this particular axis so one thing to also notice is that if this if this is motor one this is motor two this is motor three and this is motor four if the speed of this motor and the speed of this motor is greater than the speed of say this motor then what will happen is that there'll be there'll be a force this is what the imbalance would be you'll have one one speed generating this way and the other one one part of the quadcopter the left side of the quadcopter will create you know a force that is more more powerful and the other one is not as powerful it'll create a tilt and based on this tilt it'll move in the direction right so you can't really control a quadcopter directly by moving it left and right you basically control the quadcopter by changing the speed of subsequent motors or rotors and accordingly you get the left and right orientation so that's how a quadcopter works they call this an underactuated system because there is uh, for the number of um, outputs that you want from a quadcopter that's you know you want to move it in the up down left right side uh, direction but you only have like four controls but you have m very different types of and much more uh, much more higher configurations of you know um, of outputs you can generate and you do that by basically creating this tilt axis this tilt angle and based on this tilt it creates this right or left motion and similarly from a mathematical standpoint the forces of the motors so for example if this is moving say this is uh, in very simple English this will be the um, I'm just going to change this this will say for example this is uh, oh I changed the language that's interesting okay <laughs> wow I didn't know I could change the language so think of this as the hover where you basically control all four motors you basically think of this as maybe the roll and the pitch now depending on how you you know set up your matrices and what this is basically saying that if the force of of the of 2 minus 4 and this f2 could be in if i basically you know um so F2, oh, where am I? So F2 could possibly be something like this. I'm just, you know, clumping them together. And this could be like F1. So if I take this as a force of 2 and force of 1, and this could be, you know, force of 3 and force of 4. I'm just giving an example because the next equations will basically break this apart even further. So here I'm just basically saying that if you have, if there's any imbalance between, you know, certain forces and you want to multiply by the length, then length is nothing but the length from the center of mass because the more, f the further away they are from the center of mass, the more angular torque you can generate and the closer they are to the center of mass, the less angular torque you can generate. Now you need more power to generate the same amount of angular torque compared to something that's more, way more further away. So the length matters. So the further they are away, uh, the stronger your torque will be. And this similarly for the different forces. So let's, you know, break this apart. So what we have over here is um, because, so now this is where it gets the, uh, the equations actually start to make more sense. So think of this as, let me just, so think of this as motor one, this is motor three, and they both are moving in the clockwise direction. 
So this is the omega, which is the angular acceleration. And then you have motor four and motor five, which is moving in the anti-clockwise direction. So the torque produced by the Z axis, the rotation is based on the angular acceleration and the force generated by each of these motors. So you add them up. So if they're equal, then they don't spin across the Z axis. If they are not equal, if one is greater than the other or one is less than the other, then it will move in the clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. So think of this as the angular rotation across the z-axis. Now if you want it to move across the y-axis, so this is y, this is z, and this is, sorry, this is z, and this would be x. If you want it to move, say, across the y-axis, then you're basically saying that the speed of rotor 2 minus rotor 4. Now, point to note in a quadcopter, you could have two types of configuration. You could have that X type configuration and you could also have a plus type configuration. Plus type is where you have motors like this. And this could be M1, M2. Uh, and and this would be your, this would be your basically the direction in which the quadcopter moves. And, you, and in an X type, you'll have this is the direction where the quadcopter moves and you'll have your motors across the side. So this this equation is very is very synonymous for the plus type of configuration, and if you're doing it for the x type configuration, you're basically going to take if this is m1, this is m2, this is m3, and m4, and, uh, and subsequently that's the angular acceleration or their um, angular um, omegas. You would probably have this as say omega one plus omega two uh, minus omega omega 1 plus omega 3 minus omega 2 plus omega 4 something of this sort it's very similar to what we have over here um, but it depends on which is the plus and which is the minus to create the plus to create the rotation across the y-axis and similarly for the roll of pitch you take the other you take the other combination you're basically you know clumping the motors configuration together to create a rotation across a specific axis and whichever motor you basically want accumulated or the, the force and the torque accumulated you basically can generate the rotation across a specific axis that's really what a quadcopter is however you slice and dice it is is the question of like you know whether you're doing a plus configuration or x type configuration how do you want the rotors how do you want the quadcopter to maneuver across an axis and based on that you basically control the speed of the motor and based on the speed of the motor of each of those configurations and you clumping them together um, you will generate a force across a specific axis and this is a generalized way of you know creating a yaw pitch or roll for a motor uh, for a quadcopter and the configuration doesn't matter it matters based on how you clump the motors basically because I could literally take the same quadcopter and the way I control the motor will make it an X type and the way I control the motor over here will control it whether it's an uh, whether it's a plus type or whether it's an X type. And for the most part, at least in most um, designs, you'll find that, at least in practical cases, you'll find that the X configuration is a lot more stable compared to the plus type for various reasons because here you have only like two motors, one motor controlling a rotation across each axis. Here you have two, so you have a lot more. The more motors you have, the more control you have because uh, and the more um, more maneuvering capability more stability you will have across uh, each axis so you'll always find this to be a better option than this um, but then in some cases you could also use the plus type if you want you know tremendous uh, speed and not necessarily more um, controllability um, and there are cases for this as well All right, so now whenever you take something as complex as a quadcopter um, and you study things like in physics 101 or physics, you know, 102, um, how do you take a very practical use case of a, of a physics, of a product that's, you know, based on physics, distilling it down to what we learn in a textbook? And there are 
a lot of um, things if you like break apart what the quadcopter is doing you can basically take based on first principle modeling you'll figure out you know that these are the set they're basic equations that govern what a quadcopter does and i think that's really what my intention is is to remove all the complex layers and you know try to figure out you know what is physics 101 like how can i take this quadcopter and figure out you know how i can model a you know a simple um what do you say a moment of inertia across a disk can which part of the quadcopter creates this 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 particular you know equation kind of a thing so across the z axis what i'm trying to do over here is each rotor may be thought of as a rigid disk so each rotor over here if i draw this it's got is basically a disk okay and around this ez axis in the body fixed frame so if this is a quadcopter if i draw this this is also another disk and this is the z axis and each one has an angular velocity of say this is one this is two and then you'll have three and four if i draw another one like this and another one like this so the rotor's axis of rotation is itself moving with the angular velocity so the axis of these rotors each of these axes is moving at a specific angular velocity some might be clockwise some might be anti clockwise now this leads to the following gyroscopic torque applied and based on this you will create a gyroscopic torque whether it will be rotational or or clockwise or anti clockwise and this can be modeled into you know basically if i go to um Uh, let me just clear this so if i go to wikipedia and i look for moment of inertia you will have a list of um, moment of inertia for different shapes i believe they have one at the bottom and this is all <laughs> mathematical complexities and proof but you learn this in physics 101 i mean it's just filled with math math um list of moment of inertias and here you'll have like what do you have when you, when you have a point mass when you have two point mass when you have a rod when you have a circular loop of radius mass m and then this is where you're talking about a solid disk so you can basically you know model based on what you've studied before and take this quadcopter and say what is the effect of how can i break this complex object or this complex me machine into basic formulas that you know i can basically that we learn from you know just you know low level uh, basics of you know physics 101 kind of a thing and that's really what i'm trying to get over here is that all this complexity of you know doing laplace transform state space transform and all that you know state space equation and modeling each of these quadcopter dynamics and stuff i, I don't i don't think it's necessary to like you know get into all these advanced mathematics i think it's more important to break it down into the simplest form of mathematics rather than going I I think that's the better way to approach a problem like this. Though you will need to use that advanced math to do especially when you're doing control systems and stuff, but it may it's not really helpful in a, in in building a, a strong intuition of of the subject. So, I have already spoken about different types of raw yaw pitching and rolling effects based on how you can configure each motor. And the reason why I brought this quadcopter right in the middle of the slide is again just to recap what we want is um it's important to note that you know that however the quadcopter is oriented it's very important to first model your your configuration and your inertial frame like you want to know am i doing it as an x type or a plus type so if you're doing it as an x type then you you have to like figure out which way should the quadcopter move so i want this to be you know i want this to be if it's rotating across this axis then this will be my roll or this will be my pitch and this is the this is going to be the north this is going to be the south this is going to be whatever you know the west or the east depending on how you you know 
look at your quadcopter but you want to set the orientation the dimension the type of your quadcopter from the beginning because everything depends on this as i mentioned like you can have this quadcopter quadcopter you know have this as the as the um, as the north part where everything is heading in this direction it would be strange but you could have that so you got to set the initial conditions of your quadcopter before you even get into the mathematics and yes some of the mathematics can be written in such a way that it doesn't matter based on your configuration you just change some variables and it will work but you but you still want to basically you know do this initialization step so that you know things are clear and more intuitive when you start to you know figure out what's how you how you're modeling a your quadcopter so that's step one no, number one so if you had to break it down step number one is if you're designing a quadcopter however you do it um, set the initial frame which is which is your x which is your y which is your z and to do that you need to figure out whether you're doing an x type or a plus type and then three name your motors name your motor as you know m1 m2 m3 m4 if you don't name your motors or label your motors then you won't know you know which motors it won't be intuitive or easy for you to figure out you know which motor should i move or rotate to create a particular orientation or direction or maneuvering so if i label this as m1 and m1 is going to be clockwise m4 is going to be this is going to be m4 or we can do like m2 and m2 is going to be counterclockwise m3 is going to be i mean let me just clear this up and let's redraw this as m1 m2 m3 m4 so you want to label them and then you basically set the direction is this going to be clockwise and this is going to be counterclockwise this is going to be clockwise and this is going to be counterclockwise so the opposite will be if you're doing it x type actually it doesn't matter and this will be counterclockwise so now that you have labeled it so you set the inertial frame where's your x which is your y which is your z you've set whether it's x type or y type and the third is label your motors this will go a long way especially for designing something from the grounds up which is basically uh, the idea otherwise there's no point in modeling a quadcopter um, in some shape or form you're trying to you know organize and create your own custom development and based on that you then start to figure out how am i going to create the thrust the thrust is very simple as i mentioned you're basically taking the force of the motor one motor two motor three motor four now as you have noticed in this whole presentation i'm not even spoken about propellers so irrespective we're clearly assuming that the thrust of these motors is somehow you know directly proportionate to um, a force applied that the propeller that, that the force applied by the motors is directly proportional or is directly transferred without any loss to the propellers and is creating this thrust which is not true in a practical system and it gets very much into uh, the theory of uh, what do you say um, blade element uh, blade element theory momentum theory uh, and or blade momentum theory to basically you know understand how to design your propeller which will be a which will be a video that I'll be covering in the future. And the same thing, as I mentioned, you know, if you want to create a torque, you'll basically have a motor torque is opposed by an aerodynamic drag, where the rotation, the inertia is the moment of inertia of the rotator of the of the rotor. Omega is the angular velocity of the rotor. T drag is the drag torque of the rotor due to the blade drags. So if you want to basically figure out how the motor is running this is the force of your motors and there's always going to be an air drag which is opposing the force of this motors and the way this motor works uh, with this equation is nothing but based on the angular it will create a moment of inertia or a motor torque uh, across a particular axis now comes into the actual aspect and geometry of the propellers actually because 
what is a torque and what is a drag now the drag drag is going to be half into rho into a v square rho is be the air density is going to be the area of your propeller v is the speed at which they which which the propellers are rotating and v square is nothing but is equal to or the angular or the angular rotation and the linear acceleration uh, is a linear so i'll just put this out here this will be better if i just draw this again so if you have something from a point and you have this rotating there is two things one is the overall speed of the motor or velocity um, and all of this is rotating at the same say, velocity and you'll call that as linear velocity and that is V but angular velocity is different angular velocity at this point is going to be different at this point which means this is covering more distance if I draw a circle this is covering a lot more distance compared to this point this is covering a much smaller distance because the circumference is equal to 2 pi r this is going to be this r is going to be way more than this r so the angular velocities are very different from linear velocity and this is what this is basically saying that your linear velocity is equals to omega into r where r is radius based radius from the center and omega is your angular velocity so if you have if your radius is very very far away from your um, if, the, if you're if you're far away from the point your omega so your radius is going to be high your omega your angular acceleration is going to be high then your speed is also going to be high if this is low this is low if this is low then your angular acceleration is also going to be slow because you're covering much less distance and then this is going to be um, this is going to be low so and vice versa so if you want to create the angular acceleration then you basically divide this by r and then as you are further away as you are closer to the center your angular acceleration will um, so as you get closer to the center your angular acceleration should actually be bigger it should, this is smaller hmm. and then you put these equations in here you'll get what the drag is and then you can basically talk about and then you can basically take this whole thing as a constant because the row will be a constant the area will be a constant your radius for that for your for your propeller will be a constant you're not going to change your propeller in midair so all of this is basically constant so you can get these values off the omega is the only thing that changes because that will vary based on your based on you know the speed at which you're rotating and this will give you the k drag coefficient and you'll get the torque drag coefficient a lot more of this will be covered in the blade element theory and momentum theory when we go into you know designing the propellers themselves because a lot of these constants now this is this can be measured directly but a lot of these constants basically can um, are not like are not that intuitive it's based on you know modeling the propellers and and figuring out you know how much thrust the propeller can generate the efficiency of the propellers and all the cool stuff so if you see any constants um, I apologize it won't be in this video it'll be more into you know the aerodynamics of the propeller itself yeah I'm trying to switch between the epic pen and stuff so it's some notations um, these are all angular velocities uh, or acceleration so this is acceleration across the x-axis acceleration on the y-axis so if you really think about it uh, your quad copper can move in if this is uh, let me just clear this 
So you'll have, you can move in the x-axis, you can move in the y-axis, you can move in the z-axis, up and down, left and right, forward and backwards. But you also have axis, you also have angular. So angular acceleration across the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. And this is the sum, in some textbooks you'll find x dot is equals to u, y dot is equals to u, z dot. These are all linear accelerations, and these are angular. And these are the six ways in which you can rotate a quadcopter based on four motors. So and that's the reason why it's called an under actuated system. Okay, um, so now let's get into some Langrian physics. Yeah, this is not, okay, cool. <laughs> um, if we put this pen, okay. So what is Langran Langrangian physics or, or, or math? Let's go to Wikipedia just to get a notion of what it is. The whole idea is that you are basically trying to create T minus V, where T is the kinetic and the potential energy of the system. So you're taking the kinetic energy and minusing the potential energy of the system will give you the lung grain yin mechanics. And why is this important? It, it's apparently a much easier way to basically uh, model a, a dynamic system because you're not dealing with things that are moving, you're dealing with the static quantities that you can measure very quickly. So, uh, and that's one way of modeling it. There's even the Newton, there's the Newton Euler method, there's the Langrangian method, and they all did use the same way, it's just how you're approaching the problem. So in this particular case, if we take this, there's a kinetic energy that is created with the linear acceleration, this is linear. Then you have the angular, and then you have the potential. So this is the linear kinetic energy. This is the angular kinetic energy based on the rotation across the x-axis, y-axis, z-axis, rho, pitch, yaw, linear acceleration, and, and the potential energy. So it's much, I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, this is a quadcopter where m is the mass of the quadcopter. These are the moment of inertia of the quadcopter. And these are the z-axis, z, x, y, z, and z-axis respectively. So you're basically taking the linear, angular, and potential. As we spoke about in the previous slide, that the quad copper can move in six different ways. Across one is the linear side, and one is the angular. That's where we spoke about the, 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 the linear acceleration and then the angular acceleration. And last but not the least is before we, almost every um, quad copter system you know this is what infuriates me is that they'll show you this you know rotation matrix to perform rotations how do you perform rotations and i think when you look at transformations like this i think it it it, it deviates the um in the intuition from the math uh, this is an abstraction in my opinion uh, because if you don't really intuitively understand what's happening i mean this is the this it can be straightforward as well if it's if you if you go through all the derivation but it's also a little confusing in my opinion and the reason being is because you look at this and and it's all about in a simple nutshell is basically saying that if i have a quadcopter how am i moving it you know yeah, from say if this is how it's going to be positioned uh if this is my quadcopter and this is how it's going to be positioned how do i take it from say from this orientation to say something like this orientation where this is the quadcopter this is the quadcopter and if this is still my axis like how do i take it from one orientation to another orientation and and this orientation has to be with respect to something so this is respect to an inertial frame and this inertial frame you're basically saying 0 .0 0.0.0 and this quadcopter at the center might have an x value of say one a y value of say you know this will be a y value of say one and then your z value of say two. And here you'll say, okay, now my x value is gonna be of, you know, one, my y value is gonna be of two, and whatever be it. And in order for you to reach a specific point from here to say another point, how are you gonna transform, 
how is your quadcopter going to move because your quadcopter cannot go from point A to point B directly it needs to do a yaw it needs to you it needs to do a yaw it needs to do a roll or a pitch because you can't control XYZ directly you got to control it through a different configuration and this is what is basically you know trying to do in a nutshell like how do I go from one orientation to another orientation and this is like you know based on the Euler method but you could also describe quadru you could also describe your um, quadcopter and quaternions and direct cosine they're all different methods of doing this is a disadvantage of Euler you'll have something called as the gimbal lock where you lose an axis you could lose an axis uh, in some very uh, specific conditions so a quaternion is a lot more it's got is as much more stable mathematics uh, but it's kind of a little unintuitive because you're dealing with a hypersphere and bringing it down to um, you know um, uh, it's it's got four variables so yeah so this is the rotation matrix in, in a nutshell is basically how do I you know maneuver a quadcopter and his orientation with a fixed frame or an inertial frame and we'll delve more into details into this but as of now I just wanted to basically do this as a very simple nutshell you know quick introduction to quadcopter mechanics and dynamics and the modeling of a quadcopter is if you can understand as I mentioned in a nutshell um, the four main things that you would that you'd want to do with your quadcopter and I'll just repeat it because this is what the essence of this video is at least is I'm just gonna boil that down is figure out what your inertial frame is where's your X where's your Y where's your Z of your quadcopter set that up then figure out you know what your motor is with what type of configuration are you using are you using so one is create the initial frame two whether it's X type or plus type and then three label your motors with direction of motion direction of uh, rotation but this is rotation could be clockwise or counterclockwise once you have this then you intuitively know what motors you need to control for yaw what motors you need to control for pitch and what motors you, uh, for roll for pitch and what motors you need to control for yaw and that's it at least at a, in, a, in a high level in the next video we'll talk about propeller design where we'll de re deal with you know um, momentum theory and blade element theory because that really because th this slide is basically assuming that the force of the motor is directly proportional to the output that the thrust created and that's not true because the motor speed will have to go through another phase of propeller so this is converting from electrical energy to basically mechanical energy and mechanical energy is then connect converting this to kinetic energy and the kinetic energy is then creating the thrust and this kinetic energy is based on the propeller design and designing the propeller is a very important factor into modeling of a quadcopter which I do find a lot of textbooks just eliminate and they you know basically tell you know they go into this rotation matrix which I find is a kind of like you know missing the point of it's a, it's a big assumption that you know that your propeller is going to handle everything and it's and it's a and it's an ideal propeller that's just you know going to convert all that rotational energy into you know kinetic energy which is not true so in, an, in a real situation we'll have to model it and that will be the scope of the next video Thank you all. Uh, I think this has been a long video and hopefully I can see you next time. And thank you.